All right. We have one trade left we can make this year. Quinn Hughes and Elias Pettersson are available. Both are on expiring deals. PD is a god. <laughs> He's so good. And so is Quinn Hughes. Now the question for Quinn Hughes. What is P.O. Joseph? P.O. Joseph still is only a top four. If we give up Chikrin, get Joseph onto the second pair, Hughes onto the first. But in a way, is that fair to P.O.? Can we get both? No, there's no way we can get both. The only way that's an issue is then if P.O. Joseph becomes a top pairing defender, but he hasn't yet, so I can't imagine he will at all. And if he does, well, that's tomorrow's problem. Honestly, I'm scared about the idea of reuniting Joseph and Marino, but it could be Quinn Hughes and John Marino on the top pairing. So it would have to be Chikrin. I want to get rid of these prospects anyway. I mean, this would be a king's ransom to the Canucks in this deal. They are looking to completely fire sale here. I would need to add in guys like Hamaluck. Want to add in guys like Jonathan Fashal and Yuri Froloff. Okay, I can take out Froloff. Let's take on Hamaluck and we'll take on Fashal. Oh, good for you! That's ridiculous. Barons, but Barons. Thank you for the follow. Bester's great value for a 90. I don't disagree, but we don't have room for him. Like, that's why I'm not really looking at any of the forwards. Pedersen, for example, again, means Otto Stenberg would have to be a third uh, a third line guy, or we factor in Akil Thomas, but there's just, I don't know if there's enough value that we have to pull off trading for two of these players. Connor Garland, you, you talk about who's on that left side already. I mean, you got Sam Poulin on the wing, you got Holloway on the left, Kachuk on the left. We just don't have space for Connor Garland right now, uh, which means we don't have space for Brock Besser either. We just don't. The only guy that we really have uh, space for here without having to move any other pieces in the deal is Quinn Hughes. I mean, because it's chicken for Hughes and then plus. So this doesn't look like it would go through on its own. Oh, and they want to wait until the deadline. To the deadline we go, then. Let's see what the hell happens. Let's do it. I don't know what the hell is about to happen. But Quinn Hughes is out there. And we're going to see what we can do. They are wanting to maximize the return on this particular player. And we'll see what that looks like. How does this deal look on its own? Again, we won't be able to do it that way, but forward-wise, let's add in Hamaluck. Let's add in Fashan. Approach us with this exact... Yeah, you said no, because you wanted it to be the deadline, you fools. God, we have no draft picks this year. What about the Coyotes third? I'm just trying to gauge how close we are in this deal. Our second next year. What's up, man? What if we also had Danner? Take Lockhart back. No. It's gonna be an expensive freaking deal, but it guarantees us a Quinn Hughes. I 
just don't know if we have the right pieces to pull it off. What about Christensen? No. It's gotta be the right move here. I do agree that Matthew Kachuk's a wild card when it comes to playoff performance, but for now, we gotta go for it. It have to be next year's first as well. We are moving a whole heck of a lot of value. It's it's a lot of what we acquired when we blew the team up. What about the Canucks third rounder next year to safety net this? We can't afford it. I don't really see how we can afford this. Unless we give up both second pair defenders to make room for like Connor Corcoran. And we also give up John Marino. I think that's pretty much the only way we can do it is by giving up Chikrin and Marino. Which honestly you could argue is worth it because we know Marino was only a DFD. And you could argue that's worth it. Give up Rosen, give up Svechkov, give up Yarventi just to get something for them now. How close is this? I don't disagree that goaltending is the issue, but the problem is I don't think I'm going to be able to fix the goaltending this year, no matter who's out there. That's my issue. I, I don't think there's anything we can do in terms of fixing the goaltender this year. You talk about Demko, you talk about Jones. It's just goaltending so random. And the problem is, if we bring in someone, it can really only be on a one-year deal because Scrimes is going to be the guy next year. Like, he is our guy. At least we need him to be. So that's, that's the problem. We just have to build around Scrimes until he proves that he's not actually the guy to build around. It doesn't look like I can get this deal to go through for Quinn Hughes. It just doesn't look like I can. I mean, I, I guess maybe if we were to keep Robbie Arventi. Oh, he's the good one I'm for worried you. Less about. Stenborg, thank you for the follow. Yarventi is the, the guy I'm worried about the least about in terms of getting value for. God, that's a lot of assets to give up. That's a lot to give up. But Quinn Hughes on this team is crazy. I don't I don't want to use the trade finder because it just it doesn't make sense. Like I want to give up what I want to give up for him. I don't want to give them what they want. We could get it to go through for a third next year. If not a low second. So it'd be two prospects that I want to get rid of. And our second pair. Hughes is a direct upgrade on Chikrin. Granted, he will be more expensive. Chikrin's great for the contract that he is signed to. John Marino is a pure DFD with an extension kicking in. It's going to go up from, I think, four to about seven. And Rosen and Svechkov, I want to get rid of. But the idea of having Hughes and Joseph on the defense. Not too many teams can deal with that. This is a real tough choice. He's going to be a lot of men minimum. Yeah, and he's worth it, though. That's the problem. What's his track record with points? I think we have to try to have a defenseman that's capable of having a point per game pace. I think we have to try.
The only other option is to just package Rosen, Svechkov, Yarventi, and try to find a, the, the prospect like on Anaheim and a backup goalie to hope that they're good enough. Quinn Hughes, welcome to Pittsburgh. I'm in a situation where I need to take a massive risk. That is the only move we're allowed to make on deadline day. As Kevin Shattenkirk becomes available. We really don't need him. That is a massive, massive deal. But we have to take the risk. Scrimes has to be our guy. Had to do it. Gotta risk it. All right. So, it is still uh, Kachuk, Stenberg, Gensel, Holloway, Thomas, Poulan. Didn't realize that Hamiluck was in there. Um, to be honest, he's not the, the worst shout in the world. Um,. At this point, I'm not concerned if I lose Robbie Arventi for nothing. I just got to try to send him through waivers since I'm not allowed to make another trade. Uh, the sign-in hasn't been that bad, so we'll try Hamiluck. Um, honestly, then maybe that way we can keep Arventi around and trade him at the at the draft. And then the defense is going to be Hughes and Salmonson. Maybe. I might even try Hughes and Corcoran to keep Joseph and Salmonson together. It's almost disrespectful to Joseph, but again, I can properly balance that of having Hughes and Joseph set up. I think we tried that. And then our power play. We have that little setup there with the forwards. That setup there. Dvorsky and Kamel. Salmonson's not really putting up a ton of points anyway. So let's get these two back in there. See if they can put up any points. I don't really think we have too many, if any, right-handed shots. We have two. One is Thomas, one is Kamel. So that second power play, I think we'll have the proper, the proper shooting options, but... I am going all in on power play one. <laughs> all in on power play one. Dvorsky is a defense for his forward anyway with good skating. I mean, if that first power play can't put up the points, then no power play can. It is a gigantic risk, but I think one that we had to take because the idea of getting another goalie doesn't help us right now. Why doesn't it help us? One of our goals for the season directly tied to our you know to our current starter in Scrimes. We need Scrimes to turn it around and be the guy. Otherwise, we are uh, that much more unlikely to hit the mark this season. That is the thinking behind that. Quinn Hughes. I genuinely didn't expect that, but Quinn Hughes is a Pittsburgh Penguin. In terms of whether or not the trade makes sense for Vancouver, I mean, I'd say so with... I mean, who the hell we sent back the other way, for God's sakes. I'd say it makes sense for them. In a rebuilding situation, they actually get something for Quinn, but... Oh, this is going to be a real interesting end to this season. 45 wins, a top 15 scoring forward in Scrimes over a 9-15. What other deals happened at the deadline? Alex Tuck is a Jet. Kevin Hayes is a Flyer again. Nedeljkovic is a Ranger. Essel Lindell's once again a Dallas Star. Brady, I think Lindell and Kachuk were traded for each other. Now Brady Kachuk's a Calgary Flame. What the hell? Dobson, Paggio, and Wedgwood to Colorado. Pisson Joes does an Islander. Cody Cece is on the Avalanche. Tyler Toffoli's in Chicago. 
Jack Drury's in Chicago. So, man, Jack's bounced around a bit. Sam Reinhardt's now in Montreal. Sam Steele in Dallas. Romanoff in Winnipeg. Ryan Paling and Vanacek to Edmonton. Pia Suter to Philly. Sharon Govich to the Leafs. There were a lot of moves, but no doubt the biggest trade. Trust me, I would have loved to have gotten Pedersen too, but there was no way that was going to happen. Let's see. I have no idea who I just claimed on waivers. I was hitting A to sim a day forward. I claimed Victor Hedman. Cool. Well, we have Victor Hedman too. <laughs> Complete accident. I literally hit the button to sim forward the next day and the waiver thing popped up. So, shout out to 36-year-old Victor Hedman. Ah, okay. Anybody want Victor Hedman on waivers? No? <laughs> no? Nobody? All right. Well, uh, we have Victor Hedman on the team. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> we need cap whales, typically, anyway. Uh, I might give myself an extra trade to get rid of Hedman down the road. We lose our first game with Hughes. It's against the Islanders. We lose back-to-back -back games, giving up eight goals in the process. <sighs> oh, my God. Uh, we're gonna send Goodrow down again. Uh, and we're gonna call up Spoonar and Snattinger, Snattinger, and whatever the hell it is, and we'll, uh, give each of them a chance. I, God, I, I'm so worried that I'm going to have acquired Quinn Hughes, but also still miss the playoffs. There is a very good chance that that is gonna be our reality. And admittedly, I'm horrified. We play Chicago. We win. Thank God. We are currently seven points out of a playoff spot. We have to go on a run and a half here. Or we're going to miss the playoffs. Having traded away our first round pick this year. Going full Montreal, baby. Alright, three game point streak. Can we make it four? Yes, we can. This is the type of surge that we needed. Some might even say a storm surge. At this point, we just need to get to the goddamn playoffs. Like, screw the goals for the season. We just have to try to see this team get to the playoffs. Like, if we're going to face punishments and whatnot, get to the playoffs before we do. So Jan Spunar is the man for the moment. As we lose back-to-back -back against the Devils, we play Toronto. Connor Corcoran suffers a concussion. Well, that does mean Victor Hedman is going to make it into the lines. Actually, no, it doesn't. We have too many left-handed guys. Shit. Well. I think I, I do have room to call up a righty. Let's call up Graham Sward. And, uh, let's see what we can do here. Oops, no, I don't want to scratch around, but just go best lines. An AHL or NHL wise, goddamn. This is, um. Man, this is a disaster right now. We gotta get Hamaluck out of there. We gotta get Hamaluck out of there, too. He has not been good. Uh, we tried Aremba earlier in the season. Let's try Anson's. Tried him before on a lower line. Get Yarveni out of there. Defense. How has Hughes done since being here? 12 points in 10 games, but he's a minus 6. Is that on him? Is that on the goaltending? I have no idea. Let's give Victor Hedman an opportunity here in the meantime. 
He can play for Emil Vero. That's fine. We'll just go best lines in the AHL. We did beat Toronto. We have the Islanders and Sabres next. As we beat the Islanders. Very good. Jan Spoonar. On a 9.20. Scrimes is back in. There is zero chance we're passing our goal with Scrimes hitting a 9.15. We do win 6-2. to two. He's going to get back-to-back -back appearances here. It takes 85 points to be in the playoffs. We have 8 games left, and we're on 78. We nearly have to run the table here. This is going to be a complete disaster. We do beat Calgary. We are in gigantic trouble. In danger of failing all three goals. In danger of missing the playoffs. We're on a great run here, though, to try and save it. It oh, was God. Mm, five games left. We're five points out. We play Detroit and we win. Four games left. Four points out. We play the Canucks and we lose. We're five points out. We have to win all three games. But we have to win our last two games and hope the Panthers choke. Or somebody. Our playoff hopes are on life support. Here they are. We take on the Rangers. Must win. First period goal apiece. P.O. Joseph, Chris Kreider. Second period, it's over. One year after a surprise appearance in the playoffs, we buy in only for the team to fall short. Chat, don't post them yet, but start thinking of your punishments for the season. Because from what I can tell, we're about to fail all three of our goals again. As we beat the Florida Panthers, but we miss out on the playoffs by four points. Our only hope of not getting punished is Jake Gensel being top 15 in scoring. But him missing four, excuse me, five games might have been enough to screw us out of that. We need Jake Gensel to be top 15. Yes! Oh, thank God. Jake Gensel. No punishment. If that is the only saving grace, no punishment for us this year. Thanks to Jake Gensel. As Respawn says hello. Respawn. Sir, how are you? It's good to see you. I hope you've been well. Welcome to this game ruining my life. Welcome to my life schedule being thrown through a loop. One day I stream during the afternoon. The next day it's one in the morning. I don't even know anymore. I don't even know. But Respawn, how you doing, buddy? For you, who's the best defenseman in the league? Are we talking... Okay, so here's the thing. There are different ways to describe best, right? Are you talking what defenseman I'd rather have... For the next couple of years. What defenseman is going to help me the most in points? Overall. Okay. Overall. Oh, good! Victor Hedman comes to mind. I'm concerned about the injuries, but there's the leadership. And that's something you can't quantify in an overall. I mean, people are mentioning Adam Fox, Kale McCarr, Charlie McAvoy. And you can't go wrong with any of those three. If I pick Charlie McAvoy, I get called a homer. Where do you put Charlie McAvoy? Charlie McAvoy is top five at worst. And anyone who says Charlie McAvoy is not a top five defenseman in the league is kidding themselves. Um, just for the pure points, I would probably take Adam Fox. Not that Kale McCarr doesn't put up points. But McAvoy, obviously, out of the young defenseman of that group doesn't put up an incredible amount of points compared to the other two. He is the best of the group in terms of the defense. Although, as AJ mentioned, Fox does block a lot of shots. So there you go. 
Anyway, for the love of God, you've had a chance to see the point totals from this season. Uh, Jake Gensel saves us from a punishment. We earn uh, one extra scouts. I have no idea what the hell we're going to do this offseason, though. Not a damn clue. Not a damn clue. It would almost be for the best if we just go back and get rid of some of the... Uh, I, I don't want to call them... I don't know what the hell I want to call them at this point. <laughs> Let's... God, let, I don't, we'll call them marauders. I don't give a damn. They come in here, they take my money, they don't do shit. We're going to get rid of them. We're going to get rid of them. Most likely. Shout out to Keandre Miller, who scored 25 goals. Incredible. Does have really good shooting accuracy, though. Ovi did very much break the scoring record, yeah. 42 wins for Kosa, 41 for Demko. Shutout leader was Robin Leonard with seven, and the Vesna is likely going to Andre Vasilevsky, maybe Carter Hart, off of goals against average, but it's going to be one of those two. Uh, and the Calder is going to go to Isaac Howard in Montreal. But Braden Yeager scored 26 goals. It's not bad. Uh, this was a disastrous season for us. I mean, I will look at our final point totals on the year. All I can say again is thank God for Jake Gensel. Again, one of our goals for the year was to have Scrimes finish with a 9.15. That did not happen. And I am now officially concerned. Uh, one of our goals was 45 wins. That did not happen, nor did we make the playoffs. Uh, Quinn Hughes, by the way, had 24 points in 20 games once coming here. Operation uh, Sign Quinn Hughes begins, like, now. And again, if I can keep the balance of Quinn Hughes and P.O. Joseph on this team, we're golden. Absolutely golden. I think Emil Vero proved he can still be a solid third-pair defenseman. And then Victor Hedman had four points in ten games with us and a plus seven. So, again, we accidentally claim Victor Hedman. I might keep him. <laughs> we'll see. I kind of hope he retires. Uh, and Connor Corcoran... Didn't really do that great before he got injured. So he couldn't replicate that very strong performance uh, from the year prior. And not from that one in Wilkesbury, but here, the uh, 18 points and a plus 7. So we'll see We'll see what happens here. And then again, forward-wise, uh, Kachuk honestly ended up doing pretty well. We didn't get to see how he'd do in the playoffs, so I was happy with that. Stenberg was great. Thomas was probably worth booting Jack Drury for. I mean, really, it wasn't the offense that was our problem. The bottom six struggled a little bit. But it wasn't the offense that was our problem. We just could not get consistent goaltending, and it sunk us. Again, we finished five wins back of where we needed to be. So, uh, playoff-wise, by the way, the uh, Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins won 57 games, so they'll be uh, playing the Providence Bruins in round one. Uh, it'll be the Oilers and Sharks, Canucks and Golden Knights, Avs and Coyotes, Wild and Preds. And in the East, Red Wings, Bruins, Lightning and Habs, Flyers and Caps, Devils and Panthers. However, in terms of expiring contracts... We got a lot of money to spend. We got more than that 16 million. But we got some decisions to make, yeah. Excited for the World Juniors, always hyped for the World Juniors. I think Benjamin Goodrow, unfortunately, maybe proved to be a bit of a one season wonder. If he can lead that team to a Calder Cup, I might change my opinion on that. Quinn Hughes. It's honestly not that bad. It's honestly not that bad. If. If, if, if we can drop this down to about 10 and three quarters and he takes that, I'm good to go. He would have a no movement clause. That's all well and good. We'd be committing to him. Let's see if Quinn Hughes is willing to decide, is willing to, you know, decide to stay here. Salmonson's an RFA. Everyone else is an RFA. We can take care of those later. And then forward-wise, the only big name that we have to decide on is Matthew Kachuk. 
And honestly, I think we, we have to attach uh, our wagon to Matthew Kachuk. We have to. Um, he, he's, we're, we're, we're banking on him. We're banking on him. He he has to be the guy for him. If he's, if he's not, we sink with him. But so be it. And again, uh, an eight-year deal is a bit much. Six is perfect because it brings him to age 35. So let's see what we can do there. And we could drop this down potentially to about eight, uh, 8.8 and a quarter. And we'll see if that goes through as well. Again, there would be a no movement clause for Kachuk. If that goes through. And then a thousand RFAs. So here we go. Let's see what we got. Matthew Kachuk resigns. Quinn Hughes resigns. They both take the discount. Whew. All right. I am more than happy with that. More than happy with that. So Quinn Hughes for under 11 million. That is a steal and a half. That is an absolute steal. Two, three, four, five. That was the full uh, the full eight as well for Quinn Hughes. So as we do, uh, whoops, didn't mean to spin the wheel already. I didn't even have it filled out. Um, let's see how long I have to stay loyal to Quinn Hughes for. And the answer to that is he has a full no movement clause for only one season. And then I can move on from Quinn Hughes. I'll take it. <laughs> and then for Matthew Kachuk, how long do I have to stay loyal to Matthew Kachuk? Five of the six. Okay. So, uh, interesting results. Interesting results there. So for Hughes, we have to stay loyal for one out of six seasons. And for Kachuk, it's the no-movement clause for five out of six. But we'll take that. I feel like for 10 mil, it should be a full no-movement. Eh. I mean, the problem is, though, he's going to be tough to move. Any the thing is, I don't want to move him anyway. I don't plan on moving Quinn Hughes. If we're in a situation where I have to trade Quinn Hughes, that means we're screwed and I might as well just start a new series. Also, at least it landed on one year. Do you know why one year is important? Because the big question is the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins move on. The big question in regards to next season is going to be whether or not P.O. Joseph turns into a top two defenseman. If P.O. Joseph turns into oh, a top two defenseman, for you. we are bones. Shout out to the Gravy Clown for the follow. If P.O. Joseph turns into a top two defender, that means that P.O. Joseph gets traded because we already have a top two defender in the form of Quinn Hughes. My uh, risky strategy was to try and make sure that I get to keep both of them. There is no guarantee that that happens at all. Um, and really quickly here for the Wilkes-Barre run. Spoonar is now a backup. I'm going to send Schnattinger down. Schnattinger. Uh, defensively. I don't really want to send someone down who would get upset. I'm not really too worried about Graham Sword. Emil Vieira's at the age where he'd get upset. Hedman would definitely get upset. Let's send Sword back down. I want him to have the chance. Um, and then forward-wise, we can send down Ansons. We can send down Zemmer. And um, can because we have a rule in this where I'm not allowed to play someone on the improper side. They're both left defensemen. That is why. That is where the challenge comes in. That's how I'm going to do pretty much all my franchise modes, hence why I gave people a high rating face-offs if they weren't centers. Alright. Let's get Vashon out of there since he was attack on. Bring back Landry. And the AHL 
AHL is good to go. Let's see what the baby pens can do here against the Bridgeport Islanders. They immediately lose a guy to injury. Beat him 3 0 in game one, 3 2 in game two, 2 1 loss in game three, a 2 0 loss in game four, a 2 1 win in game five, and drum roll please, a, a victory in game six by the score of 5 2. So, Wilkesbury off to the conference final to play the Rochester Americans. Game number one, 3 2 win. Game number two is a 5 3 loss. Game number four, or three, excuse me, I can count, is a, another loss, 5-2. Jesus, now it's game four. Let me tie it up at two. Game five is a loss. Game six is a loss. That sucks. It'll be Colorado and Rochester in the Calder Cup final. The Devils and Lightning are in the Eastern Conference final. With the Wild and Canucks in the West. As the Canucks stay alive. Game 7 in the West. And it will be a Vancouver-Tampa Stanley Cup Final. What 2011 could have been. A Vancouver-Tampa Stanley Cup Final. I'll put up a prediction for that one. Let's take a look at what these two teams look like. By the way, uh, yeah, Vancouver just made the playoffs when I acquired Quinn Hughes. They sold at the deadline and are in the cup final. I acquired Quinn Hughes and didn't make the playoffs. I hate it here. Everything sucks and I hate it. Connor Garland, 13 points in 16 games. Pedersen, 19 and 16. And top line, Isaac Rosen with 12 points in 16 games. I could not play Isaac Rosen in that position, but boy, aren't the Canucks glad that they can. Hoaglander, 13 points, 11 for Bo Horvat, and 9 with 8 goals for Pope Colson. Svechkov, who we also traded to them, has 9 points. JT Miller with 7, and 10 for Brock Besser. Yakov Trenum with 4 points, Adam Lowry with 10, and 7 for Danila Klimovic. The defense is Jack Rathbone with 14 points, and John Marino with 5 goals. 7 points for Chikorin. Leslie with two, four points for Murray, five for Oh wait, I literally, I literally might have handed Vancouver a Stanley Cup. I literally might have handed the Vancouver Canucks a Stanley Cup. Tampa. It's Kashkovit. Jesus. 21 points in 21 games. Braden point on 24. And 28 points for Nikita Kucherov. 16 points for Gage Gonzalez. 13 for Osplund. And 24 for Stamkos. Oh my god, he's 37. Matthew Joseph on 9 points. 17 for John Tavares. And 6 for Jonas Donskoy. Fourth line, Limblom with six points, seven for Dora Fayev, and nothing for Otto Koivula, but penalty minutes and shame. The defense is Sergachev. Poor Victor Hedman, by the way, getting dumped off of this team. Uh, Eric Chernock also on the top pair. Second pair is Victor Mete with Jacob Truba. Going the way of Ryan McDonough. And then Sean Day alongside Philip Ronick. In goal, Andre Vasilevsky. Cal Foot's also there, but he's injured. Well, let's see who's going to win this bad boy. Uh, God, I hope it's Tampa. <laughs> Game one to the Canucks, or excuse me, to the Lightning. Jesus, uh, seeing what I'm afraid to see. 2 nothing now to the Lightning. Game number three. 3 nothing to the Lightning. And game number four, the Tampa Bay <laughs> Lightning win the Stanley Cup. Thank God. Oh, thank God. And a sweep. The Lightning win it. Whoo! 
Oh, thank God. And then, of course, Wilkesbury lost to the eventual Calder Cup champions in the form of Rochester. Oh, thank God. I I thought for sure I built the cup winner. Whew. We'll look at the awards as the Lightning win it. Unseeding the New Jersey Devils to do so. The Devils were looking for three straight cups. As Connor McDavid wins the Art Ross. Kucherov wins the Hearts. Kale McCarr wins another Norris. Lady Bing the Verana. Isaac Howard does win the Calder. Stamkos wins the Con Smythe. Vasilevsky, the Vesna, Carter Hart, the Jennings, the Unimportant Awards, the Selkie goes to Braden Yeager, Kucherov, the Ted Lindsay, and the Rocket Richard to Alex DeBrinket. In the AHL, do we have any notable names here? Uh, Robert Haig was Defenseman of the Year. Uko Pekalukkanen was the MVP of the playoffs. For the more familiar names. Uh, the final point totals for Tampa there, by the way. Stamkos had 35 with 25 goals in 24 games. That might be the most ridiculous playoff run I've ever seen. That is outrageous. 25 goals in 24 games. The Lightning win another Stanley Cup. And we are off to another very important offseason here, aren't we?